Hey everybody, and welcome back for part two of my Let's Play for Infinity Code 1 Operation Caldstrom. Now, if you haven't watched part one, you can go here up into the cards and click on a link to watch the first half where we overviewed missions one through three um, and the general gameplay mechanics of moving around, doing orders, uh, the ARO process from Code 1, not the full ARO process from, uh, sorry, from Operation Caldstrom, not from the full one from Code 1, um, as there is some additional rules that are in the main rulebook. Um, and then we, we've played through basically three missions, uh, and we've gone two, one, two and one for Yu Chang. Yu Chang just won the last mission um, as they uh, protected and stole stuff from the data core. So we're on a mission four. Uh, I finished paying up the rest of my Yu Chang models for uh, the White Banner, and that was um, the Hunden Ambush Unit as well as my uh, Guilang Skirmisher. And yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. I also painted my ninja, but he doesn't exist. Uh, so yeah, so we're ready to rock and roll on mission number four and five uh, right now. And of course, uh, on this video as well, I'm going to give it a week until after it airs. I'm also going to uh, take uh, people basically saying, give me that monk if they want to uh, take home the uh, Code 1 Liang K Wandering Shaolin Monk Mercenary model, the convention exclusive. I've got my hands on one. And as of course, all the conventions have been canceled because of COVID-19, um, the, uh, the chances to get one are pretty limited. So I'm going to give it away. Um, and of course, this is just me doing this solo because these are just instructional games. Again, there are additional rules in the rule book. So bear in mind, these are the rules that come in Code 1, uh, sorry, in Operation Caldstrom. And um, we're basically just focusing on the fundamentals. So for veteran Infinity players, there are some changes here that will be rolling forward in N4. Um, some new things you've seen, but this is primarily focused on new players interested in Infinity checking out a light skirmish version of the game. Right, so let's get right to it, boppers, and we're going to jump into Mission 4, Secure the Project Lance, or Lab. So let's talk about some stuff. I have hinted at this stuff in the first um, episode of this. Uh, so a few things that we go over now are going to be things we've seen before. Uh, specifically, volumes and silhouettes. So I talked about this earlier. Uh, everyone has a volume on their profile. So for instance, our Knockin, the new unit that we're using right here from Pano, he's size 2, so he uses this uh, template. And it's a cylindrical, um, like designed to be a cylindrical representation of the volume of the model. Um, and it's useful sometimes when you place it, uh, especially when you're using the full rules and you actually have the original position of the miniature and the position that it ends up in at the end of its move um, to determine whether or not a model has line of sight. So it's nice after you move your miniature, basically, the, let's say the start of a first skill, you can use this silhouette and trace a line to show any part that could be seen uh, during the course of that move for the purpose of ARO. So for you and your opponent, what this is handy for is because miniatures don't necessarily fill the whole volume of what they represent. Um, this is a good placeholder for seeing if you can see that three millimeters of, of model. Uh, for deployment, this special skill will have a numerical value attached to it usually. That's the additional distance that you can go um, up the table basically when you deploy. So for instance, he's got four deployment here. Uh, four deployment, four inches on the knock-in. That means that instead of deploying eight inches, he'll get to go up to 12 when deploying on the table. Um, mimetism, this is a special hill skill that has, for those who are veterans of infinity, um, it's been unnested from the camouflage skill. So if you have the camouflage skill and you can enter a token state, that's a separate skill from mimetism. And mimetism can go up to minus six now. Uh, representing things like ODD. So for instance, Mr. Knockin here in Infinity terms has ODD, but in Code 1 terms and probably in N4 terms has minimatism minus 6. So the numerical value is applied to all Discover and BS attacks. Spectral Viral uh, Visors then have a level and they reduce the modifier to a Discover BS attack against Trip with Mimitism by 3. So for instance, Mimitism minus 3 becomes 0 and Mimitism minus 6 becomes minus 3. So he also has a uh, Multispectral Visors or level 1, so every level of it is a minus 3. It's a, basically a, a level that you ignore of mimetism. So for each negative, you'll ignore it's think of it as like plus three against mimetism as opposed to being um, minus three. So it'll it'll balance itself out. And then we got some new weapons, multi-sniper rifle. It's a super long range gun, so this table it's gonna be a bit cramped on because it doesn't get good until over 16 inches. So it wants to sit in the back to shoot, but at 16 to 48 it's plus three, and then over 48 it's at minus three. Uh, it's damage 15, it's got AP ammo, so it has your armor rounding up. It's burst two for two dice, but one of course an arrow, and you save against armor. And there's a boarding shotgun, this one's sweet. Uh, it's damage 14, AP ammo again, burst two, saving roll against armor, and at eight inches it's plus six to hit. Zero up to 16, minus six to 24, and drops off over 24. So Mr. knockin has got a boarding shotgun, the Hunden Amish unit has a multi-sniper, and the Dao Fei still has a Spitfire, but they've up, they've done the profile here again to include his mimetism. I used it last game just to kind of show you guys how it worked, um, but it includes now his mimetism skill as well. Set up and deploy. So mission four, secure the project lab. When the alarms went off, Sergeant Stig Lundqvist, Lundqvist? <laughs> thought that the CorpSec guy had screwed up again. There's a lot of ex-soldiers in corporate security, but almost most are uh, almost 
but also some are amateurs who, after lots of tactical simulations and some patrolling, believe they're as good as commanders as Mike Frost, the protagonist of the Maya series, Cold Blue. I don't know who that is, so that's hilarious. Uh, but orders are orders, and the protocol classified the project lab as an area of interest that should be secured in case of an intrusion alert, so that's what ought to be done. Later, he'd have to apologize to all the snooty and nerdy scientists working there, though. The cascade of alerts appearing in his HUD on his way to the lab made it clear that what was happening had nothing to do with CorpSec. They were under attack from professional forces, and what the enemies probably didn't know was the facilities under the protection of the Winter Four, or that there was a Nakan who was really pissed off because he was dragged out of bed, and those who piss off a Nakan rarely enjoy a long life. Sweet, the knockin's John McClane. I'm into it. This mission, I'm going to be um, adding the knockin to my list of troops that I have available, uh, which is pretty sweet. So I'll have three Fusiliers, Night of Justice, knockin, and an Orc Troop Lieutenant. And then Yu Ching's going to have three Zanshis, a Jujak, a Hundun, which is the ambush unit with the sniper rifle, and the Dao Fei Lieutenant. She's got surprise attack, camouflage, and mimetism. So the Hundun and the Dao Fei can both become uh, camo tokens, and they're pretty, pretty murdery. Um, and then the knock-in gets added into the, uh, the, the, the pano list. So let's do a deployment roll. Again, willpower 12 for the orc troop, uh, lieutenant, and willpower 13 for the, um, Jujak. Uh, so fails and fails. They both fail, so rolling again. Because you have to go until we land. So we've both succeeded this time, six and three, but six is higher for the pano player. So you can choose to retain deployment or retain initiative. In this case, I think, with this big central table here, we will retain... Initiative. With uh, deployment then going to the Yu Ching player, uh, he will force, of course, the Pano player to deploy first. Now again, it's all models in this. It's worth reminding that in Code 1 normally, you retain a single model, so you would deploy all but one of your miniatures normally in, in full rules for Code 1, but for the purpose of this demo, um, it says to just deploy everybody. And of course, the knock-in can deploy an additional four inches up, so he'll be able to deploy up to almost half, so from there to there. I'm deploying or retaining initiative, you might as well deploy around here. He's also going first. So Knocking and creeping up, the orc hiding behind this big sort of um, uh, news station, the uh, Knight of Justice hiding behind this uh, building, and then the Fusiliers basically garrisoning the rear. For Yu Ching, we've got the um, Jujak back here, the Lieutenant, along with the uh, first camel marker, which for your is the Hunden, <laughs> and then up here infiltrating is the Dao Fei, and then one, two, three Zanchis all kind of hiding in the rear with the gear. Um, obviously, you, the viewers, and, and me doing the demo will know what everything is, but the piano player wouldn't know. Um, the Hunden, obviously, wanting to make best use of the sniper rifle, needs to sit far at the back. Now, something interesting about the Lieutenant, I did recheck last night after uh, filming the first game, and Lost Lieutenant doesn't do anything in Code 1. So even in the full rules, Lieutenant's just a bonus. You know, Lieutenant gets a special order. It could be that they're an objective in certain missions, so you do want to be careful revealing who they are, but for the most part, it's just a benefit. Now, for turn one, six regular orders from the six characters, and then one Lieutenant order, which will go to the Orc. Um, and they get to activate their first model. So we can see what the knock-in does, but it feels like the knock-in is less less survivable until he gets up close, and it's probably going to be best for the orc to go and try and deal with uh, this Mr. Jujak. Lieutenant order, because he might as well do that first. He'll walk six, because he moves six around the corner here. Not quite making it to cover. Jujak will, of course, shoot, uh, because he is out of cover. Um, and I think he'll just move again. Ah, we might as well just shoot back. Looks so, like we are within two of these. Yep, so we are within 16, so both sides getting um, a bonus, but a modifier for partial cover against the orc troop. So plus three, minus three, um, and that's going to put him at a 14, versus just plus three, which put him at 16 for the AROing Jujak. Uh, now this Zanshi and also this Camel Marker can see. Marker will get one good shot, but he won't get a surprise shot bonus unless it's his active turn. So... I think he'll decide to idle, uh, and then of course the Zanshi, is it worth it to fire right now or is it worth it to dodge? I think she'll dodge, try and get a line of sight. No, she might as well shoot. Is she within 16? 8, 16? No, she's not, so she'll be at minus 3. Then his second skill, he will shoot back. Uh, shooting against the Zanshi would be at minus 6, putting it at 8, but he might as well try to defend himself, and then he'll put two shots into the Jujak um, on a 14. So it'll be two shots in the Jujak, one shot into the Zanshi. That uh, was AP round multi-rifle. So the Jujak gets a six and hits. Uh, the multi-rifle Orc with his two shots hitting 14s gets a nine and a four. So the four gets canceled, but the nine gets through. And that'll be half armor. So armor becomes two. So damage 13 goes down to 11, plus the cover modifier minus three is eight or less. Uh, he'll take a wound, otherwise he'll be okay. 20 is fine. The Zanshi at minus 3, uh, needing an 8, and then against um, the Orc minus 6, needing 8 as well. So both on 8s. 
14 to a two, that's gonna fail and he'll take a round. Armor four against damage 13, nine or less he'll take a wound. It's a nine, he's gonna take a wound. Not not good first opening shot. Well, another regular order on the orc, might as well not leave him in the wind. He can go six up to this wall and gain some cover if he just hurdles this, yep. So now again, in full code one, you take the shots anywhere along. He'll be out of cover against the Jujak, but he'll be in cover um, in his next order against the uh, the Zanshi. Now for both of them for this one, in full code one, they'd be out of cover. Decide to shoot back. Uh, so for the Zanshi now, it's gonna be on a 14 uh, versus a plus three minus three 14. He'll split his dice the same way. So two against the Jujak and one against the Zanshi. The Zanshi uh, needing a 14 for being in the open. Five will hit, one will hit as well, but get canceled, so another round. Uh, on a nine or less, take a wound. 12, he's okay. And against Mr. Jujak, it'll be 14s against 13. Actually, sorry, against 16. Three against a seven and a two, so canceled. And his armor of two, have for the AP round. Sorry, three have down to two for the AP round, rounding up. And then minus three for the, um, the cover. We'll make it a grand total of damage of eight. 17, he's okay. In cover against the Zanshi now, so you might as well go again. Uh, and this time around, I think... Does the Daofei want to go? Daofei can't see him. Uh, the Hunden's still in cover and uh, doesn't want to do anything to reveal himself because he wants to save it for a surprise shot. So I think Mr. Orc Troop is just going to move slightly into cover. Continue being in cover. And then, so being in cover from both during the next order. Uh, and then split his rounds exactly the same way. <clears throat> so two shots into the um, Jojak, who will be on a 16 versus 14. Uh, 15 will hit and cancel both, so that's going to be, again, uh, damage 13 against armor 4, so 8 or less to take a round. Oh, he's unconscious! Oh no! And then against the Zanshi, single shot, so 14 against 11. Miss and hit again, and he fails his roll with another one, and he's dead dead. That was not the rampage we wanted at all. Just it's time to go figure it out. So, with a 6-2 movement, going 6 with the first skill, we'll take her to this corner. We had a line of fire of all the Yuqing models, so going 2 again. Next order, going to come around the corner just to look at this camel marker. And it can either shoot, or it could idle and hope it isn't discovered. Now, if it isn't discovered, that Anagestus cannot attempt to discover it again. So it's worth, I think, just holding. So willpower on the Anagestus is 13, plus three for discover check for that range, minus three for the mimetism, and minus three for the cover. So that's gonna make it 13 goes into seven or less to pass. Spotted with a six, uh-oh. There's Mr. Dalfey. Another order of the Anagestus then, and let's do some melee, why not? Moving to melee. So Daofei can choose to dodge or close combat attack or shoot back. And I think with the Spitfire being zero for range and the Daofei being close combat 19, it's better off right now to do a melee attack. Now the Night Justice is close combat 23, meaning that she'll get to add three to her roll and any roll will pass and the highest will win. Anything over a 20 becomes a crit for her. So she gets, uh, there's a 16 for the Daofei, which passes um, and only a 14 for the Night Justice, which means that the uh, Night Justice took a hit at physical 14 from the Daofei. Armor six though, so or sorry, armor five, so 14 minus five is nine. Two, takes a wound. One's right into her sword apparently. Last order, uh, Mr. Nockin's not feeling great about where he is. He doesn't want to fight the Fusilier and the Jujak at the same time. So I think we just put it in the Justice and go one more time. Uh, the Daofei, does she want to dodge or just keep fighting? I think she just wants to keep fighting. CC 19, might, might as well. Let's see what happens. Uh, so the Daofei crits, and with the plus three, the Nidus is failed or misses. So two armor rolls now, nine or less takes a wound. Uh, so she's okay, and just laughs it off. But apparently this was not the fight that she was looking for. Turn one for Pan-O. Oh, lost the Orc Troop, which was not great. Nokin didn't do anything this round, and we've managed to keep the sniper rifle together. Now it's six regular orders and a lieutenant order. Um, and where do you want to start? Well, I think we're going to start with... This cam marker, which is the Hunden. Hunden moves 4-4, four, four, so taking a walk out to here. Now the line of fire of the um, Night of Justice is blocked right now because she's in melee. So just with the second skill, moving a little bit more, just so that she could move into cover. 
to see this guy in our next move. Number two, gonna move across and then out to see the knockin'. And the knockin, I think, is going to dodge. He does not want to get shot. By shotting back, uh, she will reveal herself from Camo State. And that's going to incur a minus three to the dodge roll because of the surprise shot. Now, he has a physical of 10 because he wants to get out of my sight. He doesn't want to get shot twice. Um, he is minus six for his mimetism and minus three for cover, meaning, and she's uh, probably within 16 right now, which is not what she wanted. No. So she's within 16, so she's at zero range, minus nine. Her BS of 13 becomes a four. Back at a cover would have been a seven, but then he might have shot back. <laughs> um, so then uh, he'll be at minus three, though, down to a um, 10 goes to seven, seven or less. So seven or less for the dodge, and then a four or less for the dead. The Hunden, and she misses, and he doesn't dodge. Two orders, three orders. Do we go with the Jujak? Do we go with the Dao Fei? I think we go with the Dao Fei. And we just melee. We're just gonna try and stab. 23 to 19. Let's see what we get for damage here. She misses, just barely. Uh, and he hits, or that's right, he misses and she hits uh, the Dao Fei with her physical of 14. So physical for the Night Justice, uh, armor on the Dalfei is four, so needing a 10 or less, I think, take a wound. 11 plus, she's fine, she's okay. Well, it was worth a shot. Uh, we're gonna back up, I think, with the Hunden. Just get her to cover, but be able to be in line of sight of the Nakan. Nakan's gonna attempt to dodge again, and she'll shoot now at minus six, because she's plus three for a sniper rifle outside of 16. Um, and he's minus nine for mimetism and cover. So minus six overall makes it a seven. Seven versus seven. I was not surprised shooting. Seven versus 10 now. She crits, and he rolls a two, meaning that um, the, uh, the the success is less than the threshold of success for the hit, and the critical cancels it anyway. So that's gonna be two armor rolls uh, for Mr. Knockin. It's damage 15, minus three for the cover, minus two for the armor, but the armor's have down to one. That's gonna be 11 or less, he'll take a wound. Takes a wound, takes a wound, just gets blown off the table, and has one. He did all right. Uh, so what do we wanna do with the Dao Fei now? I think the Dao Fei... She's not really going to be able to dodge. She's just going to keep fighting, I think. So what we really want to have happen is have the... She want, she can see her, so it doesn't really matter. So I think we just give another one to the Daofei and hope that she starts to murder. One on both sides now because both the Orc... Sorry, that's two points for the, um, the Yu Ching because both the Orc Troop and the Nakan were worth additional points. Orc wasn't. The Night Justice were one, so it's first point scored now for the, um, the Yu Ching. Uh, one point for the Orc Troop just for Trooper Eliminated. So, yeah, we give another order to you, I guess. And let's see if we can do it. 19 to 23. 15 will hit, becomes a 15 as well, and they both, sorry, it becomes a 16 actually, and she wins. Plus three, and that means a single armor roll now for the um, Daofei on a 10 or less. Take a wound, he's good. Two orders left, I think we get Mr. Jujak moving. 10 in order, and take a walk, and go six. And then you go two more and just go eight because no line of fire from being in melee. And then last order, I think we're gonna go again and fight that orc trigger, that uh, fusilier. So walk over to here, see the fusilier. With the arrow shoot, he'll split his dice, two here and one here. This fusilier on a 15 plus three because of uh, doing it before the model reached cover. Um, we might as well start applying that for the purpose of the demo. Although he could probably have moved out and just over in the line of fire. Um, so plus three minus three would make him a 12. And then for the Jujak, it will be plus three minus three for a 13. And then two shots against the close one. 20 will miss, two will hit, 10 will hit higher. So he takes a round. Uh, minus three for cover, minus three for armor. So 13 becomes a seven and has to roll eight or better. Okay. One to one between the Fusilier and the Jujak. So the Fusilier, uh, they're both within 16, plus three, minus three, and that'll mean 12s to 13s. A one will hit, but a nine will hit better, and that's another round for him. Three takes a wound. Round for Yu Chang. They've done okay, but they're getting a little beat up. We're count for Pan O. We've got our no lieutenant order left, but we do have one, two, three, four regular troops. Start with the Night Justice, because she needs to get free. She's going to try and melee again. So CC 23. One becomes a three. 13 becomes a. Uh, hit, and that means that at Fizz 14, she has to roll a, a better than a 9. So 10 plus. She's okay. Mm, does she try again? No, I think we go with this Fusilier now. 
and he's going to just move slightly up. Uh, he'll shoot and he'll shoot back. Three shots for 12s for Pano and one for 13s for the Jujack. Uh, it's going to be a 6 and a 10, which will cancel the Jujax 2, because they're both higher. And the Jujax has to make 2 rolls. Uh, 13 damage, minus 6 for armor and cover, makes it a 7. 7 and a 4. Not just unconscious, but dead. Mighty Fusilier. Well, 2 hours left. That didn't go um, in any way, shape, or form wrong. So let's just hope that we do the same thing now with the Knight of Justice. So 23 against 19. 18 is another hit, doesn't quite take it over 20 though, it's not a critical. And it's another armor roll, 10 plus. 15 is fine. I really needs to do it again. So 23. That's a, that's a 9 versus now a 21, which is a crit. So two armor rolls for the Dao Fei. Um, with an armor of 4 versus physical 14, 10 or less will be wounds. A 1 and a 9, that's the Dao Fei just unconscious. Finally, after much hacking and slashing, Night Justice puts her down. I'm down. Night Justice is the she. I gotta, gotta keep getting this right. Uh, but that's all the orders in the Pano pool, and that puts it back over to Yu Ching. Now, order count there's one, two, three Zhan Chis, and the Hundun. Well, the Hundun needs to take care of this, so first order here, moving into cover. ARO's. I think we'll spit fire with the Night Justice, that's all I can see. Trump the Night Justice, BS 14. Um, she does have mimetism though for minus three, uh, plus three for the 24 inch range in the Spitfire, and that's going to make it a flat 14. Uh, 13 over um, the range of uh, 16, so that's going to be plus three, becomes a 16 total. So 16 to hit here, 14 hit for the Night Justice. 14 hits, 15 misses, so two rounds AP, and then I just is having armor five down to three. So 15 minus three is 12 or less, she'll take a wound. 18 and eight, she goes unconscious. And the Hundun's getting work done. Two points now for Yu Ching, uh, and one point for Pan O, plus the number of model count down. So we're looking at a grand total of uh, three kills for Pan, sorry, three kills for Pano, or for Yu Ching, sorry, uh, plus the two Mark Troops is five. Next order, she's gonna have to go Fusilier hunting now, and that's gonna push her forward, so she's gonna go four to here, and be able to see that Fusilier. Throw up the template, you can see she's peeking over the edge, and that's gonna mean that uh, she can shoot or dodge, there, yeah, I think he, he can, he's probably gonna dodge on a 10, because the shot back would be almost impossible, um, because of all the modifiers. And she's going to be hitting at plus three, minus three, so 13. So two shots on 13 for the Hunden, um, and then one dodge on a 10 for the Fusilier because he wants to get the hell out of there. So 13 will hit. Um, the six will succeed in dodging, but get canceled because the hit cancels it. And so he's got to make an armor roll. Uh, AP round on armor one. Doesn't really do anything. So it's going to be minus four to the damage of 15. 11 less, he takes a wound. Goes unconscious. Wow, you're doing pretty great here, Hunden. And I think you can probably get line of fire of that going an inch and then three more inches, walking to this edge over here. That last Fusilier, you're in the open. But he's bad range. Oh, he'll probably try and dodge, because bad range, he'd be at minus six, would hit on a six. Now he'll end your rampage, though, if he does this. Right, the minus six are dodging on a 10. Better stats of 10, so we'll dodge on a 10. And that's two shots at plus three, minus three. You get 13. So the 15 and 20 will both miss, and he will dodge, which means he can get out of line of fire. Back up against the wall, her last order. She'll just go again, and walk into line of fire. Of both, oh, no, you're unconscious, never mind. Uh, so, yeah, I guess at this point, do we think that's 16? Yeah, so we're gonna try and shoot. It's so one to there, and then two, definitely within 16. Uh, so plus three, minus three for the Mimetism, makes it a 12 for the Fusilier, and then two shots on 13s, plus three, minus three, sorry, plus, much as minus three on 10s. So 10 to 12. Uh, so the 12's a crit, and then a six would hit, but gets canceled, and that means two armor rolls for the Hunden, who is armor of three. So armor three against damage 13, beat a 10 twice. Pass fail, goes unconscious. It's over to Pana, only two troopers left on the table though, so only two orders. And it's just these Fusiliers have to get in position. So first order, going to this Fusilier, will come down three and then go across five to here. And then the other Fusilier will do much the same thing. Just, just pairing up, going four and four, and end in cover. 
count over here. It's just Zanchi's left. <laughs> so three orders into the Yuching po pool. Uh, and I think we're going to do much the same thing and just look for a fight. So we're going to come down two, go across six with the first order. She doesn't want to be in the wind though, so she'll go again and go stand on the stair. Moving less than eight and staying in line of sight. And then last order, this fellow will do much the same thing, just going across to hug this cover. Orders again for the Fusiliers. And they're going to have to fight. So, four inch move, come to the edge here, and be able to see this Zan Shi. Uh, the Zan Shi will fire. Are they within 16 to that part? And then in, yep. So, one shot from the Zan Shi, plus three minus three for an 11. Three shots for the Fusilier, plus three minus three for a 12. Uh, the four and the two will hit, the 18 will miss, so two rounds going to the Zanshi. Armor one, uh, and then three for the cover, makes the damage down to nine. Fail, fail, just gets blown away. Second to last, uh, second order, I guess. Uh, just walking up, hugging the wall. Up to four, that should gain line of fire. And they'll both shoot each other. It's no job, so uh, one on 11 versus three on 12. The four will hit, the seven will cancel it though, so a single round into the Zanshi. And she, at 4, 19, passes her roll. Active player passes back to the Yuching, and that's gonna be two orders, so just par for the course, I think. Uh, put an order on this one, and we reverse the tide, so one on 12 versus three on 11 now, as she sprays back with her combi rifle. Uh, and the 11 will hit, but get canceled by the critical. So he has to make two armor rolls. Cover plus armor of one is a nine or less to take a wound. The six will do it, and he goes unconscious. And then second order, she's gonna head up here, and just wait. Turn down to the wire, well, pop your head up, and see what you can see. So standing up to here, she can see the top of the head of this uh, Fusilier, it says her, so it will go up to here, and that should get over the top of it, and her silhouette should reach over the top as well, yep. And so that's gonna be, uh, three shots on 12s versus one on an 11, firing back. Or she could dodge. No, it's better to, better to shoot in this case because the stat's 11 versus 10. The three and the two will both hit, but get canceled by the six and the nine. So that's two armor rolls in the Zanshi. She fails, fails. Uh, the nine and the six both just taking her off the board. All right, well, active player goes back over here and we're basically just gonna go back and forth now because we're gonna move eight. And she's gonna move eight, as opposed to get orders back and forth. And then she's gonna move eight into cover. And then she's gonna move eight into cover. And then she's gonna come around and shoot. And we'll see who wins. So one on 12 versus three on 11. Uh, so the eight hits, but gets canceled by the 10. One armor roll right here. Uh, nine or less takes a wound. Passes. Active player goes back over to these guys or to Pano. We reverse it now. So three on twelve versus one on eleven. A crit and a hit. So three armor rolls now for the Yu Ching player. And the five will do it. And unconscious victory to Pano. Surviving Fusilier manages to protect the lab. Even the stem lab it was completely intentional, but the stem lab door is like right there, and they're fighting over it with the last of the couple of Zanchis. So score-wise, they eliminated seven troopers um, on the Pano side, plus the Hundun and the Jujak for eight nine, and then they also <laughs> killed the lieutenant first. They actually go to eleven, and then finally um, they uh, Yu Ching player managed to eliminate six for six points, and got the Night Justice and uh, the um, Knock. So that's going to be a grand total of eight, eight to eleven at the end of the game. Jump into mission five, final mission of the box. Um, and so we're gonna introduce a couple new rules. Now unconscious and dead, you've already seen me introduce all the way through this just cause like, why not? <laughs> uh, but for those of you who weren't listening during the course of the last four games, unconscious when you take your first or your, your full wound stat in wounds, um, you get the unconscious state, it means you can still be interacted with for the purpose of some of the stuff later on, doctoring and medkitting. If you take a wound additionally to that, you go to the dead state, which means you're removed from the tables. So you go all the way to dead. Um, the doctor skill allows a model with that skill to enter base to base with an unconscious model, and if they pass a whip check, restore it to one wound. 
Now, what's cool about um, that one wound is that they um, they they basically become operative when they get their order back during the next order pool phase, um, and they just rejoin your army. Now, if you fail that whip check, though, they die. You just can't resuscitate them, and like you CPR their chest off, and they just they go straight to dead. Um, and there's the medikit piece of equipment that usually every doctor has, but also paramedics will have it, and it allows you to also make not just the doctor roll, but also a ranged attack medkit roll. So kind of like the uh, the, the was it the medic in um, Team Fortress, you can shoot health dots at people. Uh, it's got a plus three at eight inches, zero at um, 16, minus six at 24. It's burst one. There's no other traits other than it's a med kit. And you have to make a fizz roll. Now, again, you might notice you play infinity. It's not fizz minus three, it's just fizz. Um, and if you pass that physical roll, it's just normal roll, roll equal to or under, you get a wound back. If you fail it though, you die. They just, again, the adrenaline shot just stops your heart and kills you. Um, so handy because sometimes you just can't get to the guy that you're trying to, you're trying to resuscitate. Then we got monofilm um, close combat weapons. It's damage 12, um, and its trade is uh, you get zero ever like um, armor. You just you, you don't get any kind of like stuff against that. You always have armor zero against it, um, and your physical is your, uh, your the damage is 12. Uh, it's burst one, and you save and roll against armor, but the armor is always equal to zero. And if you fail the roll, you go straight to dead. That's it. It's a lightsaber. So it's like a giant sword that's a lightsaber. And of course, the Knight of Justice is going to be carrying that guy. Or sorry, actually, the Infirmary is going to be carrying that guy. The Monofil Metal Weapon. So not only does he heal, he also takes off heads. Um... And those are our rules for this mission. So uh, in this mission, Liang Kei, the, the Shaolin monk here in the middle of the table, is uh, going to get a handy marker for him. And he will be the one that, of course, this miniature I'm, I'm giving away, which you'll hear about at the end of the video. Uh, it needs to be like stopped. He's some kind of mercenary and they got to stop him on both sides. And so you have to control the building at the end of the game to win. And you control the, uh, the building by having... Um, the, the most conscious model standing on at the end of the third turn. So the game ends after three turns, uh, but going back and forth, or if one player loses all their models. And the person controlling this is gonna get four points. And then for each enemy trooper limited at the end of the game, it's one point to a maximum of 10. So with seven troopers on each side, there's 10 potentially on the table as secondaries. But for the most part, you're trying to get in this top of this building and, and stay there. He is a reactive trooper and thinks both players are hostile. He has a 360 line of fire and is armed with a combi rifle. So he's going to shoot everybody. He dodges at plus one and, and has mimetism minus three. The dodge is kind of irrelevant though, and he's BS 11. Uh, we're not trying to kill him. We're just trying to... Uh, no, never mind. We control the central module just by killing him. So we can kill him, actually. Never mind, we can kill that guy. We just want to get on top of that building and hold it. Why is the person in charge of an infirmer infirmaria of the Order of the St. Lazarus must foremost protect the patients and the medical facilities, but infirmaria is, above all, a Winter 4 member, an elite one to boot. So the alarms went off in the Mine Corps Research Building next to the infirmaria. Uh, Master Sergeant Niles Carlson <laughs> declared the complete closure of the infirmaria. infirmaria. Just call an infirmary, man. Just activated the red alert protocols and made sure that all the personnel were at their battle stations and well armed. Once his obligations to the order were fulfilled, he donned his sword, took his gun, charged his med kit, and then rushed out towards the corporate building and possible hostile agents and maybe civilians in danger. It was time to fulfill his duty as a member of the Special Operations Command of the Winter Four and to deliver both hope and death. So, deployment roll. Now, obviously, it's kind of advantageous to deploy over here because the stairwell to the top of the roof is over here, and that's something to consider. Uh, so fail roll for the Yu Ching player with their uh, orc, or sorry, their um, Jujak lieutenants, but a pass roll for the orc lieutenant, which means they can choose either maintain an issue or maintain deployment. In this case, it almost feels like it's the right thing to do to maintain deployment and get the right side. Yu Ching then decided to maintain initiative and go first, but of course the panel player will force them to deploy over here and they'll play all their models. Over all of the cool models before deployment that we're adding, um, obviously we've got uh, Lee and K, which is that special edition model. Then we get the Infirmary of St. Lazarus, who's CC20 with his monofilament metal weapon, which is pretty sweet. He's got a combi rifle, medkit and doctor, and then he is just a one wound model with armor two and BTS three. Uh, the Guilang Skirmisher is an infiltrator with a multi-spectral visor level one, has surprise attack level three, camouflage, infiltration, and mimetism. So another camel model for the Yu Ching. You can have a deployed cam marker here, which is quite possibly the Gulang Skirmisher. Cam marker over here, which is quite possibly the Hunden. Uh, sorry, the um, Daofei. And then a cam marker over here, which is quite possibly the Hunden. And then we've got the Jujak up the middle with the three um, Zanshis hiding in the back. And we're deploying their Knight of Justice in line of fire of that Zanshi and Jujak with her Spitfire. Uh, the knock in, of course, for deploying. And we've got a Fusilier in the rear with the Fusilier in the rear, the Orc Lieutenant, and then the Infirmarier with the last Fusilier. 
Well, I'm thinking the stairwell, it is first turn of three. So there's an actual turn limit this time around because we're playing a full game with all the models. Um, seven orders in the order pool and a lieutenant order for the Yu Ching. Well, going with the lieutenant first, just to make sure that he gets somewhere safe and cozy. Uh, moving his six up into cover. And then just hunkering down. Being said, it's uh, going to be ARO time for the Spitfire, uh, which will shoot. Uh, that'll be a single shot on a 14 in the open, plus 3, going to a 17. Uh, he'll shoot back then with 3 shots from his combi within 16, but minus cover, so going down to 13. So 13 against 16, sorry, 17. 9 will hit. Uh, the 6 will also hit, but um, get cancelled. So it's a single round at damage 14 from the Spitfire going into... The Jujack and his armor is three, means to roll better than 11. Takes a wound. Out of the way, it is regular order time, and I think the Hundun is gonna take a move four inches back to here and get in line of fire, maybe, of that Knight of Justice. Nope, not yet. He's getting in line of fire then, so another order. The Hundun can slide across until it is definitely in line of fire, the Knight of Justice. Who can attempt to idle or, sorry, can attempt to delay ARO or discover. I think she'll delay, because she knows. The Hunden's going to surprise shot her. So appearing to fire with her sniper rifle. 16 for plus 3, possibly over 24. That's out of 24, so that's going to be a minus 3 for the Spitfire, minus 3 for cover, minus 3 for mimetism, and minus 3 for surprise shot. So 14 is going to go down to 2. Um, and that's going to mean a 2 or less for the Spitfire. And then 2 shots for the sniper rifle at plus 3, minus 3 for cover. So on 13s. So the 14 will definitely miss, and the 8 and the 10 will both hit. So 5 armor, have down to 3 rounded up, and then plus 3 for cover, uh, damage of 15. So 9 or less to take a wound. A 1 and an 8, right to unconscious! Oh no! But blam! For those keeping track, Lian Ke can't quite see down past the lip of this wall. Can see the Night of Justice, but ARO's don't trigger ARO. So even though this is an AROing piece, could not see anyone that was actually going to be able to trigger an ARO yet. I uh, would probably be able to see the Zanshi if it activated, but cannot see anybody else. And she even is probably too close. Can actually see the Hunden on that second skill. If we go like that, yo yeah, can see the Hunden. Okay, so that's going to be a cover rifle shot, just unopposed, because I'm an idiot. Uh, in cover and Mimetism for minus three, so uh, BS11 goes down to a five. Misses. That makes the next decision easy. <laughs> Stays in cover and kind of idles, and then this will uh, react to fire, and she'll shoot back. So two shots at plus three, so that's going to be on 16. Oh no, she's not over 16, so she's just zero, so 13s, versus one shot on an I. Minus six, so five. Eight will miss, two will hit, and that's going to be a single armor roll. Uh, armor on the Shaolin Monk is one, half to one, because rounding up, and then damage 15. Monk's unconscious. Looking pretty good so far, but we definitely don't want that doctor to come and cause any problems. So I think we're going to have a die to this Guilang Skirmisher. And the Skirmisher is going to walk around. Staying at a line of fire. It's going four. Getting to here. And not being able to get in line of fire the knocking, which is nice. And then not line of fire the Orc Troop. So then we'll just, I think, move again. And it's going to be line of fire both, and they can attempt to make the discover rolls if they want. Discover check for the Knock Trooper, who has an MSV-1. So outside of 16, it looks like. In line of fire, yep, just outside of 16. And that's going to mean that uh, it's minus 3 for that, minus 3 for camo. Whip 12 goes down to a 6. Doesn't see it with a 7. Um, and then over here, going to be at zero, and then minus three for the mimetism. So whip 12 goes down to a nine for the orc troop. Spots him. So reveals the Guilang. But is out of line of sight at the end of the move. Guilang's going to touch the cover, and then slide up to see Yon Doctor with the boarding shotgun. Actually, this Fusilier, rather. Fusilier's feeling pretty okay about that, so he's going to shoot, I think, at plus three, minus three. But the Guilang has mimetism of minus three. So it's minus six. So it'll be on nine for the combi rifle. And then shooting back with the uh, boarding shotgun at plus six, minus three. So the Guilang's going to go up to a 14. 14 versus one shot on a six. Ten's going to miss. Three's going to hit. Damage 14 with half armor. Uh, so ten or less to take a wound. One, unconscious. Last order. Coming to the edge. Just to peek out and see the doc. Doc, uh, I guess just shoots with his combi rifle because he can't melee. So, taking a shot, if he, if he shoots, he'll be at 16, minus 6 is 10. If he dodges, he'll be on an 11. 
Do we dodge or do we shoot? We shoot. 11, sorry, 10 to plus three, or plus six minus three, so 14. Uh, misses, the six or seven will hit though. So armor two goes down to one, plus three for cover is four. So 10 or less will take a wound. Ducks down, store does he just do it one more time? I feel like he's on a sweet rampage. He's on kind of a sweet rampage. But the other option is get the orc troop in line of fire. And I think that's, or to get the hunted in line of fire. I think that's a better idea. Let's take an order. And we just want to be able to cover this alleyway. So move moving down to here. We can't see anybody right now. But if that orc troop wants to come find the, the, uh, the Guilang, he's going to have to walk down and snipe rifle alley. A solid turn one, down the monk. Killed the, um, killed the Knight of Justice, the Doc, and a Fusilier. So four regular orders and a Lieutenant order for Pano. Well, the Sniper's covering two positions. It's covering the Nockens position, and it's covering the Orcs position. So unfortunately, we have to make a choice here. The Nockin could do a good job of probably beating up this Jujak if he could get behind him. But the problem is that wherever he goes, this Hunden's going to see. On well, the other option... There isn't really a lot of other options. <laughs> the other option is to brute force with the orc. That's not a terrible option, so I think that's what we're going to try. I'm going to give him a lieutenant order. Going to walk out his four, staying out of line of five, everybody. Uh, with no arrows, just going to do it again. Hope for the best. The job is to take the, take the high ground here. So first of four orders, orc's going to go again. Take a walk up four, and I think the first person he's going to see... There's nobody. See this camel marker? And the answer is yes, you can. So that camel marker is going to idle, I think, and the orc will don't discover on 12 or less. Actually, is he with an eight? He is, so it is plus three. Um, so plus three minus three means that will be discovered. Alfe is now seen. In regular order, uh, might as well just hug the cover and stay there. And so, uh, moving slightly, the Dalfe will react by shooting, dodging. Dodging's probably better, because I want to get a line of fire. And then, yeah, so three shots on 14s, plus three minus mimetism, because he's not touching cover right now. And then one dodge roll on a 14 to the Dalfe. That's a crit and a hit, which will both cancel out seven. That'll be three armor rolls for the Dalfe, armor three. Uh, versus AP goes down to two, no cover, so 11 or less would be a wound. Everything's fine. Let's try again, Mr. Orc. I mean, you're holding the top right now. So, dodging again, I think, trying to get a line of fire. Yes, because he's at zero range right now with his Spitfire anyway. So, better try and dodge on a 14. One will pass, but 997 will also defeat that one. So, three armor rolls again, 11 or less is wounds. Three and four, oh, eight and four, unconscious. He goes, he takes two wounds. Mr. Order, I think he's just gonna go for the roof. Stand like this. ARO's, uh, we've got a Zanshi who can see, a Hundun who can see. The Jujak can't see because it's straight up in the air. And now they can the Zanshi over there. So I think the Zanshi's gonna shoot, the Hundun's gonna shoot, and he'll split his fire. He'll split his fire two to one. Two at plus three, minus three into the Zanshi. And the Zanshi back at plus three minus three, so the eight will cancel the two. Uh, strength of, uh, sorry, armor one halved is still one. So four total with the cover, uh, reducing the damage down to a nine. So nine or less is a wound. The Zanshi's okay. And then the Hundun, one against one, so it'll be 14 against uh, zero mod uh, for the sniper rifle, which means that it's gonna be on a 10. So 10 to 14. Uh, 12 will hit, and that'll mean that it's a single roll. Uh, armor of two gets halved to one, cover for four, so damage 13, goes to a nine, passes. That's it, ignoring the Guilang, but taking the rooftop. Round one, on to round two. So both sides have lost some models now, and that's gonna mean that it is order count time. One, two, three, four, five, six, plus the lieutenant order for Yu Ching. Well, they gotta dislodge his orc troop, or they can go and start trying to clean up everyone in the rear with the Guilang. I feel like just ignoring the orc troop for now and sending in the Guilang to try and murder all these guys is probably the best idea. So we're gonna take a regular order, give it here, and walk out four. Now we're gonna see both. But if we come out to just see one, we'll be at bad range. We'll try it. We'll come out one to see at bad range 
and just see this one back here. We're within 16. Nope. So that's going to be minus 3, minus 9 for the Fusilier, which puts it at a 3. So I think he's going to try and dodge. And then shooting at um, minus 3, minus 6, we'll make him a 5. So try and shoot on 5s to 10s for the dodge for the Fusilier. That's a fail, fail, fail. Nothing happens. Uh, once again, 5s to 10s for dodge. Crits and <laughs> cancels that. Two armor rolls for the Fusilier. Passes, passes, and he's okay. It's not working, so let's move over here and try the Jujack. <laughs> so as he's crawling around the edge, the um, orc cannot see him right now. So he's gonna walk around here. He is wounded, however, for the first skill. Second skill, just snuggling up against the edge. Now, he can react inside zone of control, but all he's able to do is dodge or reset. He might as well try and dodge on a 14. Just turn around a little bit. He does. I'm just going to pivot slightly so that this stairwell is in his arc, and so are this, this, and this. Another rotor on Jujack. He's going to slide out, try and get this guy not in cover, or not in the open, uh, but at least able to be in bad range for his own gun. So, oh, but he can see this Fusilier first, which is actually what he's going to do. He's going to stay at line of fire and see that Fusilier first. Appear to be within 16, yep. Uh, so the Fusilier is going to shoot, I think, this time for a 12 plus 3 minus 3. And a 13 plus 3 minus 3 for the Jujack. So the 10 will hit and cancel the 1 and the 8. Uh oh, Jujack, armor 6 plus 3 for cover. Sorry, armor 3 plus 3 for cover is going to be 6, um, meaning that the damage of 13 goes into a 7. 3 is unconscious. Oh no. It fell apart real fast. <laughs> this is the Hero Fusilier. One done. I think you have to get the work done now. So just taking an order and sliding to continue to see the Orc Troop. Our troop's going to shoot once on a 14, plus 3 minus, actually sorry, not a 14, uh, plus 3 for range, minus 3 for cover and mimetism, so on an 11, and then the Hunden will be 0 minus 3 for a 10. Time with the sniper rifle, 11's a crit, oh no, and cancels both these hits, 2 armor rolls, 2 have down to 1, plus 3 is 4, so damage 13 minus 4 is a 9, 9 or less, he, the Hunden takes wounds. 20 and 10, good, and again, 10 against 11, and the Hunden gets a crit, and a hit, and then a miss for the orc troop. So three armor rolls for the orc. Armor four, because the AP have down to two, plus three for cover. 15 becomes a 10. 10 or lesser wounds. Five and three, that's an unconscious orc troop. One order left. Oh, do we think we can do it with you? No, we think you're just gonna move back to cover the stairs. Just go stand over here so you can see the stairs, but not be in line of fire of that knock. Turn to pan O. And it's going to be one, two, three orders in the order pool. It's not looking great. Going down was a big deal, but the road is almost clear here. So I think the knock should have to make a dash for it. So heading up. Going forward the first short skill. Heading forward. Now he's going to dash this edge, which means that the, uh, the Hunden can fire. So the Hunden will shoot. And then the... I don't think this guy can see yet. He's gonna dodge with his second skill, and that's gonna hopefully be able to, or actually, does he wanna shoot back? No, he wants to dodge, I think. Just dodging should do it. Second shot would be so bad otherwise. It'll be 10, I believe, or less for the knock-in, or is it 11? Nope, physical 10 for the dodge. And then minus, uh, sorry, plus three for being over 16, and then minus six for mimetism. So minus three overall, so 10. It's 10s for everybody. So one, one die each on 10s. Hits, uh-oh, single hit. Uh, armor 2 goes down to 1, so a 15 or more to pass the armor roll. 11, he's unconscious. We're down to Fusiliers. <laughs> oh no. Well, you never can underestimate a Fusilier. At least this one kid doesn't have to be able to be seen. So going four around the corner. First skill. Second skill just moving towards the stairs but not in the line of fire. Last order. Moving four up to here. To see this Guilang. Guilang's gonna have to shoot. An eight? No, just out. So minus, sorry, zero uh, to hit. So only an 11 to hit here with the boarding shotgun. And then three shots at plus three minus six. So minus three reversal, nines. Nine to 11. 19 is going to miss. Nine is going to crit. And the six is going to hit two. So that's three armor rolls for the Wheeling Skirmisher. Armor one goes to four for the cover. So 13 goes into a nine. Beat a nine. Nope, fails it and goes unconscious. Top of three. And nobody owns the building right now, but there's a Fusilier watching it. Count for the last Yu Ching turn is going to be five orders. One, two, three, four. No, actually just four orders. Like the closest, and she's going to have to get the job done. So that's going to be right here. So first order, 
Just going to remove. Head to this corner, out line of sight of that fusilier. Second order, sliding into line of sight, sliding into the DMs, going over and across to maintain cover, so they both have cover. Three shots on 11s uh, versus, does she want to dodge? If she dodges, she can get onto the building, which is what she needs to do. She needs to get to the top deck though. Now she shoots. So 12 to 11, 18's gonna miss, two hits for the Zanshi. Uh, that's a failed armor roll. Because it's 13 minus 4, and a 2 will fail. So unconscious. Whoa, for this Fusilier. Second to last order, she should be able to just hop all this, going 4, and then hurtling this last little edge bit right here, and staying in a line of fire that other Fusilier. And then move again to get to the top deck. And then fourth order, just coming around and sitting here. I'd line aside of the Fusilier. Fusilier's got one order on turn three to step out and try and kill her. So that's gonna be one order. Uh, it's gonna be an 11 back to shoot. And then she'll have a uh, 12, or he'll have a 12 to try and cap her to get her off the roof. The one will hit, the 12 will crit, and she'll miss three armor rolls. Armor one goes to four, so 10 plus. Fail, fail, goes to dead. Turn three, so each enemy trooper eliminated. Uh, the Pano side eliminated one, two, three, four troopers for four points. Uh, they eliminated, oh sorry, wrong page. Uh, four for, for four points, and then they did not hold the top of the table at the end of the game. Uh, the Yu Chang player eliminated one, two, three, four, five, six. That means six points. So six, four for Yu Chang at the end of the game. Mission five, sweep the R&D area. So now what else is cool in this booklet? Well, you've got your Beyond Kaldstrom, expand your collection uh, descriptions. You get actually a description for all of the Beyond Kaldstrom box set characters. So the Vargar security team, the Locust, and the Boig soldiers on the Pano side. The Ye Mao infantry, the Shang Ji, and the Jing Ko, uh, the Shadow of the Hung Dai on this side, and then you get army list entries for all of it. So basically with the Beyond box, you jump to a 25 point game played on a three by four uh, versus the 15 point game played on the 24 by 32, which is the poster mat. And you do get the stats for all those models. Now what you don't get is the stats for the Dire Foes box. You also get a cool uh, assembly and paint guide, which is basically how I did mine, black lining and stuff like that. Um, and you get a, how would you go play code one? So Calstrom box, Beyond Calstrom and the Dyersville box is supposed to be the first wave. And then for the other armies that are gonna get included, and this is a cool spoiler, it's 012, and the, I think it's the Shaz Vasti, but the combined army. And they're gonna get action packs, which are not quite a starter set, but they're an army box that, that is like a, almost like a, a 300 point army in a box. It'll be a 30 point army in a box, I imagine, because it's 10 models, so it's a full legal list. And then a Dire Foes to go with it. So what you're looking at here is Kaldstrom plus the Beyond Kaldstrom gives you your full 25 point armies with the 10 models. The Dire Foes will take it to almost, um, I think almost to 30. And then after that, the release schedule is everybody's getting a support pack, a remote pack, a tag pack, a booster pack, a booster pack, and a hero. And so what's cool is Code 1 has this really cool like collector stream where you can see exactly what's going to be coming out over the course of the year. And it's an introductory to the Infinity Universe. So all these armies can roll over into N4 when N4 comes out and you'll be ready to rock and roll. So you have it, let's play for Operation Kaldstrom Complete. Um, I'm really stoked about this box set. I like the idea that so like put yourself in the point of view of like a retailer that doesn't know anything about Infinity. There's a huge number of Infinity models, a huge number of SKUs, a huge number of codes. And if you're not talking directly with someone who knows about the game, if you're talking like a distributor or something like that, it can be hard to figure out what to get. Code one for Op for Infinity is gonna be a great thing for if you were excited about having Infinity in your local game store, talk to your local game store owner about it and say, just open that back page of the book and be like, this is everything people need to play Infinity, not just Infinity, but also a simplified version of Infinity you can play anywhere. On these poster mats, it's ready to rock and roll out of the box. Easy to order, easy to understand as a hobbyist, easy to understand as a retailer. It's ticking all my all my favorite business boxes as far as like a release, and I'm super excited about it. I like the fact that it passes the Christmas morning test where you open it up, you have everything you need to play in one shot. Like I, I made a point of running the, the five missions from this with just what came in the box after I built and painted everything. Um, 
And there's a really clear, cool plan for adding to it and releasing two new armies to go along with it too. So I think it's really cool that we're going to have Yu Ching and Pan El, classic enemies. We're going to have O12 and the combined army. So like O12 being like sort of the, the space cops versus the space aliens. It's going to be really, really neat. And I'm excited to see how this uh, develops going forward and the releases that are coming out. I love kitchen table games. I think in our current environment of um, social distancing and stuff like that, this is a great at home game too, because again, one box, you're playing at home, you can teach your kid, you can teach your friend, uh, whatever, as, as, as things start to sort of like speed or pick back up, and we have, I, in Canada we're calling it the extended bubble, like you pick one or two friends or one or two family members that you're all practicing safety the same way and you start to sort of bring them into your life. Um, this is gonna be a great game that you can play anywhere at home, you don't have to have a huge gaming setup. And you have all the terrain stuff that you need too. So great job CB, thanks for sending me to check out, thanks to the Carlos's and Blen, as always, um, for uh, give us a chance for you guys to look at it. And and of course, if you want to get the Lian Kang Wandering Shaolin Monk, the event exclusive, all you got to do is comment, like, and subscribe down below um, and say, give me that monk. So we'll see you next time for more Infinity Code 1. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a good one. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications of when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course I will continue doing it as long as I can.